Hey there. The next knot I'm going to demonstrate for you is actually a combination of knots, but I want to demonstrate how to tie a closed system utilizing a Blake's hitch. So we have our rope installed in our tying point up in the canopy. I'm going to take my working end and to tie a complete closed system, I need about a wingspan that much rope to complete the system. So by stretching out that rope in my arms, I'm now going to pinch off my wingspan and I'm going to begin tying my system up. So I've got my carabiner here on my climbing harness. I'm going to maintain where that wingspan was pinched off and that's where I'm going to begin tying my knots. So I need to start with a termination knot and for starters I'm going to utilize a bunt line. So I've come through my carabiner. I'm then going to make a round turn. I've kind of got a figure eight there and I'm going to bring that around and complete that bunt line. For a closer view, check out my demonstration on how to tie a bunt line so you can get a nice close up uh, visual of how to tie this termination knot. Once I've completed that, I now need to find and hold on to my fall end of my climbing line. And with my remaining working end here, you can see I still have lots of rope left over. I'm then going to kind of build a bridge between my termination knot and next we're going to tie the Blake's hitch. So very important, this length of bridge is going to be equivalent to say something like your climbing stride. So it's going to vary based from climber to climber in how much they need um, between these two knots. Um, I generally start with about 12 inches so that we can start from there and figure out what works for you. But when we start with this next uh, Blake's hitch, uh, you can see that I've crossed over my fall into my rope and I'm then going to make four consecutive turns around going in the upwards direction around that fall end of my rope. <clears throat> so you can see here, I've got four turns and I've got that working end coming out in the dire same direction, coming back at me from that bridge. Because we started on top, so towards you, my viewers, I'm then going to capture over top of that, uh, that center bridge. I'm then very important, this is a very important next step here. I need to go behind the fall end of that rope and then come up those bottom two turns. Okay, very important that we go over in front of that bridge and then behind that standing part. If we don't go behind, in front and then behind, we don't create a proper Blake's hitch. We then create a very slippery knot that can be quite dangerous and it can be deceiving where it might, you might be able to set it pretty tight but as soon as you go up in the canopy and put your full load into it, um, it often will slip down on you and send you for a potentially scary ride. So make sure that we've tied that correctly. To set this knot, we really want to work all of those turns so that this knot really tightens up around the fall end of our rope. And there we have it, our Blake's hitch. Okay, this is a good strong knot but it's not very secured so it's very important that we complete this with a stopper knot a really good stopper knot that i like to use is the double overhand um, you'll see very often out there people using the figure eight the figure eight often works itself out very easily in ropes and you end up having to tie it uh, multiple times throughout your climb or alternatively it comes undone and climbers don't often either notice it or they don't care to retie it. So very important that we have a stopper knot on there. So we're gonna go ahead and hopefully I've got enough tail here. If I don't, I can simply try and work some more of this rope through the whole knot system to gain more. 
And if you feel I'm taken away from my bridge, we can work more through that bunt line. Rather than retying this whole system, I can just work that rope through. And there we go, we should have enough now. Making sure that we always have enough tail at a five to one ratio at the end of our knots. But now you can see I kind of took away from my center bridge. So again, I'm just going to work some rope back through that system to regain a little bit more uh, bridge between my termination knot and that Blake's hitch. And that looks good there. And now I can set that knot and we have a closed system where now we can either hip thrust up or we can do a foot lock and tend that Blake's hitch up into the canopy. So a really good useful knot with very minimal gear, but in a closed system, it's not very efficient for moving up into the canopy or um, poking up as we like to call it. Um, so there is ways to turn this into an open system and keep watching and we can demonstrate how to utilize that Blake's hitch in an open system. What I'm gonna demonstrate next is the Blake's hitch system in an open system configuration. So I've gone ahead and I've, used, I've tied the working end of my rope up with a bunt line and a double overhand stopper knot with an uh, appropriate amount of tail at the end of my knot. Now the next pieces of gear I'm going to need for this open system configuration is this chunk of rope here, which we call a split tail. It's a chunk of climbing rope with a large splice on the end of it. And you can see that it's got the appropriate tags of verification. So with this large eye, I want to attach this eye to the carabiner with a girth hitch that allows it to be fully secured and properly rated for our system. I'm now going to attach that carabiner to my bridge. Now, similarly, as we tied our closed system, we want to create that bridge between our working end and our fall end. So between my bridge of my harness and, the, and my fall end of the rope. So again, that length of that is kind of similar to our climbing stride. If you've got a length that's too long for you, uh, for your climb, then you're gonna be having to make multiple movements to tend that knot up. Um, alternatively, if it's too short for your stride, you're not gonna be as um, effective climbing and you're not gonna be able to make a proper walk. It's like kind of shuffling your feet as you walk rather than walking uh, in a normal stride. So. Again, I always generally start with around 12 inches. From there, similarly as we tied before, we're gonna tie that Blake's hitch by coming around my fall into my rope in an upwards direction. I'm going to make four turns. And now you can see here, my working end comes out in the same direction as the bridge back to me. And from here, I need to capture over top of that bridge and then coming behind the fall end of my rope. Very important. Over top and then behind. Okay, and from there I'm going to come up through the bottom two turns. Pulling everything nice and tight. And in order to really dress and set that knot, I need to turn those turns to get them nice and snug rather than just kind of crank on that working end. Um, it doesn't quite work that way. You really want to turn those around so they're nice and snug against that fall into the rope. And there we have a nice snug Blake's hitch. And again, the Blake's hitch is not a very secured knot. 
So we need to complete this with an overhand stopper knot. So I tie that double overhand. We've got plenty of leftover tail and we keep that stopper knot nice and close to our Blake's hitch. So if it does roll out, um, it's going to immediately be engaged with and stopped by that stopper knot. And there we have it. We have that Blake's hitch configuration in an open climbing system. And that way, when we're up in the canopy, if we need to advance over, we can connect our, our lanyard and then we can take that working end, separate it from that uh, system and allow that to advance over a limb or union. But as we would with anything, we wanna make sure that we sit in that knot before we ascend to make sure everything is tied, dressed, set and good for climbing. And this knot is ready for me to proceed. Thanks for watching.